All right, this is the second half of Twilight Chapter 8. I believe this was just titled Port Angeles. Uh, when we last left, Edward was hanging out with Bella, with Jess and Angela after the whole ordeal. Okay. <clears throat> Would it be all right if I joined you? He asked in his silken, irresistible voice. I could see from their staggered expressions that they had never unleashed his that he had never unleashed his talents on them before. Uh sure, Jessica breathed. His talent is staring at them and seducing them with words. Is his talent being basically mannered? Yes. His talent is being polite. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Bella, we already ate while we were waiting. Sorry, Angela confessed. Sorry. That's fine. I'm I'm not hungry, I shrugged. I think you should eat something. Edward's voice was low, but full of authority. He looked up at Jessica and spoke slightly louder. Do you mind if I drive Bella home tonight? That way, you won't have to wait while she eats. Uh, no problem, I, I guess. She bit her lip trying to figure out from my expression whether that was what I wanted. I winked at her. I wanted nothing more than to be alone with my perpetual savior. There were so many questions that I couldn't bombard him with until we were by ourselves. Okay. Angela was quicker than Jessica. See you tomorrow, Bella. Edward. She grabbed Jessica's hand and pulled her towards the car, which I could see a little ways away, parked across First Street. As they got in, Jess turned and waved, her face eager with curiosity. I waved back, waiting for them to drive away before I turned to face him. Honestly, I'm not that hungry, I insisted, looking up to see his scrutinized face. His expression, though, was unreadable. Humor me, he replied. He walked to the door of the restaurant and held it open with an obstinate expression. Obviously, there would be no further discussion. I walked past him into the restaurant with a resigned sigh. The restaurant wasn't crowded. It was off-season in Port Angeles, and the host was female, and I understood the look in her eyes as she assessed Edward. She welcomed him a little more warmly than necessary. I was surprised by how much that bothered me. She was several inches taller than I was and unnaturally blonde. Oh, little blonde. <laughs> the sickest insult. Got her. You're not blonde at all, Bella. <laughs> like, the second a girl looks at Edward, Bella's like, just let, let me just list off She's all their like, flaws. Just let me find something wrong with you. <laughs> a table for two? No. Oh. His voice was alluring, whether he was aiming for that or not. It says a question, so I thought it was the waitress, but I guess that was Edward. Uh, yeah, that's not a normal thing to do, Edward. A table for two? His voice was alluring. Sure. <laughs> uh, yes. Did you come here together, sir? It, like, it's a question. <laughs> <laughs> like, normally you're like, two, please. Anyway, I saw her eyes flicker to me and then away, satisfied by my obvious ordinariness ordinariness and by the cautious no contact space edward kept between us she led us to a table big enough for four in the center of the most crowded area of the dining room he's like what a bitch <laughs> i was about to sit but edward shook his head at me perhaps something more private he insisted quietly to the host i wasn't sure but it looked like he smoothly handed her a tip i'd never seen anyone refuse a table except in old movies Sure. I mean, it's pretty common. Yeah, I, I think we routinely do that. We're usually like, how about not next to the baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, she sounded as surprised as I was. She turned and led us around a partition to a small ring of booths, all of them empty. How's this? Perfect. He flashed his gleaming smile, dazing her momentarily. Oh, uh, she shook her head, blinking. Y your server will be right out. She walked away on steady. She just got off. Apparently. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What are the, like, the people in this uh, universe? Uh, you really shouldn't do that to people, I criticized. <laughs> it's hardly fair. Do what? Dazzle them like that. She's probably hyperventilating in the kitchen right now. I'm crying. He seemed confused. Oh, come on, I said dubiously. You have to know the effect you have on people. He tilted his head to one side. His eyes were curious. I dazzle people? You haven't noticed? Do you think everybody gets their way so easily? He's like, Bella, I pay people. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, I'm rich. Bella, I just gave her like a thousand dollars. <laughs> he ignored my question. Do I dazzle you? Frequently, I admitted. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and then our server arrived, her face expectant. The hostess had definitely ditched behind the scenes, and this new girl didn't look disappointed. She flipped a strand of short black hair behind one ear and smiled with unnecessary waitresses warmth. Waitresses don't do no. this. Waitresses what? don't care how Did, hot like, you are. The they... waitress barrel back there and is like, I have to change my panties right now. Like, waitresses <laughs> spend all day dealing with annoying people. They don't fucking care what you look like. They want you to leave. <laughs> Hello, my name is Amber, and I'll be your server tonight. What can I get you to drink? I didn't miss that she was speaking only to him. He looked at me. I I'll have a Coke. To drink. <laughs> I'll have a Coke? It sounded like a question. Two Cokes, he said. I'll be right back with that. She assured him with unnecessary smiles. But he didn't see it. He was only looking at me. All I can think of is that meme where it's the crying cat biting a pizza. And it's like Edward pretending to eat knowing you'll have to puke later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What? I asked when she left. His eyes stayed fixed on my face. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Dazzle. I replied, surprised by his <laughs> intensity. You don't feel sick? Dizzy? Cold? What, should I? He chuckled at my puzzled tone. Well, I'm actually waiting for you to go into shock. His face twisted in that perfect, crooked smile. I don't think that's going to happen. I said after I could breathe again, I've always been good at repressing unpleasant things. What? Just the same. I'll feel better when you have some sugar and food in you. Right on cue, the waitress appeared with our what drinks in a basket of breadsticks. <laughs> she stood with her back to me as she placed them on the table. Are you ready to order? She asked Edward. <laughs> Bella? He asked. She turned unwillingly towards me. I picked the first thing I saw on the menu. Uh, I'll have the mushroom ravioli. Maybe she wasn't talking to you because she could sense her anxiety <laughs> mess you were. And you? She turned back to him with a smile. Nothing for me, he said. Oh, of course not. Let me know if you change your mind. The coy smile was still in place, but she was, but he wasn't looking at her. And she left dissatisfied. We understand, Bella. He's looking at you. He's only got eyes for you. All the other girls. Drink! Keep the distance. <laughs> it's drink, he ordered. <laughs> I sipped my soda obediently Ugh, and then I drank more. <laughs> <laughs> and then drank more deeply, surprised by how thirsty I was. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> I realized I'd finished the whole thing when he pushed his glass towards me. Thanks. <laughs> I muttered, still thirsty. <laughs> the cold from the icy soda was radiating through my chest, and I shivered. Are you cold? <laughs> it's just the coke, I explained, shivering again. Don't you have a jacket? His voice was disapproving. Is this you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes? I looked at the empty bench next to me. Oh, I must have left it in Jessica's car, I realized. Edward was shrugging out of his jacket. That's a shame. I suddenly, <laughs> oh, suck, suck. I suddenly realized that I had never noticed what he was even wearing. Not just tonight, but ever. I just couldn't seem to look away from his face. I made myself look now, focusing. Now, here we go. He was removing a light oh, beige boy. leather jacket. Underneath, he wore an ivory turtleneck it's sweater. It fit him snugly, emphasizing how muscular his chest was. Did Edward wear a turtleneck in the movie? I don't think he did. I don't think I think it was always V-necks. It was always literally the opposite. Because yeah, it, it showed his, like, weird chest hair. It was always uh, V-necks and, like, weird not-over shirts. Yeah, because he talked about that one, like, how the he collar has, like, had the, the wire, wire in it. And he said it was the most pretentious thing on the planet. Because yeah. you can make it just so disheveled. I have too many Twilight facts. Yeah. <laughs> I have such a log. Uh, he handed me his jacket, interrupting my ogling. Thanks, I said again, sliding my arms into his jacket. It was cold, the way my jacket felt when I first picked it up in the morning, hanging in the drafty hallway. I shivered again. It smelled amazing. I inhaled, trying to identify the Stop. delicious <laughs> scent. <laughs> it didn't smell like cologne. The sleeves were too long. I shoved them back so I could free my hands. The color blue looks lovely with your skin. Can you imagine he said, watching me. a jacket and they just go... Uh, 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, yes, you are going into shock. <laughs> the color blue looks lovely with your skin, he said, watching me. I was surprised. I looked down, flushing, of course. He pushed the bread basket towards me. Really, I'm not going into shock, I protested. You should be. A normal person would be. No, they wouldn't. You don't even look shaken. He seemed unsettled. He stared into my eyes, and I saw how light his eyes were. Lighter than I'd ever seen them. They were golden butterscotch. <laughs> I feel very safe with you. I confessed, mesmerized, into telling the truth again. This displeased him. His alabaster brow furrowed. He shook his head, frowning. This is more complicated than I had planned. He murmured to himself. I picked up a breadstick and began nibbling on it, measuring his expression. I wondered when it would be okay to start questioning him. I feel like Edward just says nonsense. He does. He just, like, <laughs> says random prose. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you're in a better mood when your eyes are so light, I commented, trying to distract him from whatever thought he had left him frowning and somber. He stared at me, stunned. What? You're always crabbier when your eyes are black. I expect it then, I went on. I have a theory about that. His eyes narrowed. Oh, great. More theories. Mm-hmm. I chewed on a small bite of the bread, trying to look indifferent. I hope you're more creative this time. Or are you still stealing ideas from comic books? His faint smile was mocking. His eyes were still tight. Well, no. I didn't get it from a comic book. But I didn't come up with it on my own either, I confessed. And? He prompted. But then the waitress strode around the partition with my food. I realized we'd been unconsciously leaning towards each other across the table, because we both straightened up as she approached. She set the dish in front of me, and it looked pretty good, and I turned quickly to Edward. Did you change your mind? She asked. Isn't there anything I can get you? I may have been Is imagining the double meaning in her words. Or a it's like... a <laughs> Edward took her to a whorehouse. <laughs> No, thank you, but some more soda would be nice. He gestured with a long white hand to the empty cups in front of me. Sure. She removed the empty glasses and walked away. Now you were saying, he asked. I'll tell you about it in the car, if... I paused. Ah, there are conditions. He raised one eyebrow, his voice ominous. I do have a few questions, of course. Of course. The waitress was back now with two more Cokes. She set them down without a word this time and immediately left. I took a sip. Well, go ahead. He pushed, his voice still hard. I started with the most undemanding, or so I thought. Why are you in Port Angeles? He looked down, folding his large hands together slowly on the table. His eyes flicked up at me from under his lashes, the hint of a smirk in his face. Next question. But that's the easiest one, I objected. Next question he repeated i looked down frustrated i unrolled my civil war picked up my fork and carefully speared a ravioli i put it in my mouth slowly still looking down chewing while i thought the mushrooms were good <laughs> i swallowed and took another sip of coke before i looked up okay then i glared at him and continued slowly let's say hypothetically of course that someone could know what people are thinking Read minds, you know, with a few exceptions. Just one exception, he corrected, hypothetically. All right, with one exception, then. I was thrilled that he was playing along, but I tried to seem casual. How would that work? What are the limitations? How would that someone find someone else at exactly the right time? How would he know that she was in trouble? I wondered if my convoluted questions even made sense. Hypothetically, he asked. Sure. Well, if that someone... Let's call him Joe, I suggested. Mm -hmm. He smiled wearily. Joe, then. If Joe had been paying attention, the timing wouldn't have been needed to be quite so exact. He shook his head, rolling his eyes. Only you could get into trouble in a town this small. You would have devastated their crime rate statistics for a decade, don't you know? We were speaking of a hypothetical case. I reminded him. He laughed at me. Yes, I suppose we were. Shall we call you Jane? How did you know? I asked, unable to curb my intensity. I realized I was leaning towards him again. He seemed to be wavering, torn by some internal dilemma. 
His eyes locked with mine, and I guessed he was making the decision right then whether or not to simply tell me the truth. You can trust me, you know, I murmured. I reached forward without thinking to touch his folded hands, but he slid them away minutely, and I pulled my hands back. <laughs> I don't know if I have a choice anymore. His voice was almost a whisper. I was wrong. You're much more observant than I ever gave you credit for. But I thought you were always right. I used to be. He shook his head again, but I was wrong about you on one other thing as well. You're not a magnet for accidents. That's not a broad enough you classification. Are <laughs> you are a magnet for trouble. If there is anything dangerous within a ten mile radius, it will invariably find you. And you put yourself into that category, I guessed. His face turned cold, unequivocally. I stretched my hand across the table again, ignoring him when he pulled back slightly once more, and I to touch the back of his hand shyly with my fingertips. I ignored his boundaries. His skin was cold and hard like a stone. <laughs> Thank you. My voice was fervent with gratitude. That's twice now. His face softened. Let's not try for three. Agreed? I scowled but nodded. He moved his hand out from under mine, placing both under the table. But he did lean towards me. I followed you to Port Angeles, he admitted, speaking in a rush. I've never tried to keep a specific person alive before, and it's much more troublesome than I would have believed. But that's probably just because it's you. Ordinary people seem to make it through the day without so many catastrophes. He paused. I wondered if it should bother me that he was following me, but instead, I felt a strange urge of pleasure. Mm -hmm. He stared, maybe wondering why my lips were curving into an involuntary smile. Did you ever think that maybe my number was up the first time with the van, and that you've been interfering with my fate? I speculated, distracting yeah, myself. <laughs> that wasn't the first time, he said, and his voice was hard to hear. I stared at him in amazement, but he was looking down. Your number was up the first time I met you. I felt a spasm of fear in his words, and the abrupt memory of his violent black glare the first day, but the overwhelming sense of safety I felt in his presence stifled it. By the time he looked up to read my eyes, there was no trace of fear then. Do you remember? He asked, his remember? angel's face grave. <laughs> That's immediately what I thought. <laughs> yes, I was calm. And yet... Here you sit. There's a trace of disbelief in his voice. He raised one eyebrow. Yes, here I sit. Because of you, I paused. Because somehow you knew how to find me today, I prompted. He pressed his lips together, staring at me through narrowed eyes, deciding again. His eyes flashed down towards my full plate and then back to me. You eat, I'll talk, he bargained. I just remember the scene in the movie where this takes place. Yeah. The song in the background is Robert Pattinson singing. Yeah. And it's really bad. And that's all I can remember in this. It's like it's and an it's all also of... not as intense as this. Yeah, this is absurdly intense. <laughs> like the scene where they're eating in the movie is like comedic. They're like, haha, you, you're ha -ha, a vampire, aren't you? You're and a he's psychic. Like, oh, I might be. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're at like this slutty ass Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, uh,. <laughs> you were destined to die when I met you, Bella, because I'm going to fucking gonna kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <sighs> I quickly scooped up a ravioli and popped it in my mouth. It's harder than it should be. Keeping track of you. Usually I can find someone very easily. Once I've heard their mind before. He looked at me anxiously and I realized I was frozen. I made myself swallow, then stabbed another ravioli and tossed it in. I was keeping tabs on Jessica. Not carefully. Like I said, only you could find trouble in Port Angeles. And at first I didn't notice when you took off on your own. Then when I realized you weren't with her anymore, I went looking for you at the bookstore. <coughs> I saw in her head. I could tell that you hadn't gone in and that you'd gone south. And I knew that you would have to turn around soon. So I was just waiting for you, randomly searching through the thoughts of people on the street to see if anyone had noticed you, so you I would know, know like where a you were. <laughs> I had no reason to be worried, but I was strangely anxious. I was lost in thought, staring past me, seeing things I couldn't imagine. I started driving in circles, still listening. The sun was beginning to set, and I was about to get out and follow you on foot, and then. He stopped, clenching his teeth, together in a sudden fury. He made an effort to calm himself. Then what? I asked. The rapist. He continued to stare over my head. I heard what they were thinking. 
He growled, his upper lip curling slightly back over his teeth. I saw your face in his mind. He suddenly leaned forward, one elbow appearing on the table, his hand covering his eyes. The like movement was so swift cutie. that it startled me. It was very hard. You can't imagine <laughs> how hard for me to simply take you away and leave them alive. His voice was muffled by his arms. I could have let you go with Jessica and Angela, but I was afraid if you left me alone, I would go looking for them. He admitted in a whisper. I sat quietly dazed, my thoughts incoherent. Why? He's told you this like six times already. Yeah, he's like, I'm a murderer. He has Bella. constantly been saying people. this. <laughs> my hands were folded in my lap, and I was leaning weakly against the back of the seat. He still had his face in his hand, and he was as still as if he'd been carved from the stone his skin resembled. Finally, he looked up, his eyes seeking mine, full of his own questions. Are you ready to go home? He asked. <laughs> I'm ready to leave. I qualified, overly grateful that we had the hour-long ride together. I wasn't ready to say goodbye to him. The waitress appeared as if she had been called or watching. How we doing? She asked Edward. We're ready for the check, thank you. His voice was quiet, rougher still reflecting in the strain of our conversation. It seemed to muddle her. He looked up, waiting. Sh sure, she stuttered. Here you go. She pulled a small leather folder from her front pocket of her black apron and handed it to him. There was a bill in his hand already. He slipped it into the folder and handed it right back to her. No change. He smiled, then he stood up, and I scrambled awkwardly to my feet. She smiled invitingly at him again. You have a nice evening. He didn't look away from me as he thanked her. I suppressed a smile. He walked close bes beside me to the door, still careful not to touch me. I remembered what Jessica had said about her relationship with Mike, how they were almost to the first kissing stage. You're I not sighed. Even dating. <laughs> Edward I'm seemed to hear me, and he looked down curiously. I looked at the sidewalk, grateful that he didn't seem to be able to know what I was thinking. He opened the passenger door, holding it for me as I stepped in, shutting it softly behind me. I watched him walk around the front of the car, amazed yet again by how graceful he was. I probably should have been used to that by now, but I wasn't. I had a feeling Edward wasn't the kind of person anyone got used to. Once inside the car, he started the engine and turned the heater on high. It had gotten very cold, and I guess the good weather was at an end. I was warm in his jacket, though, breathing in the scent of it when I thought he couldn't see. That's so crazy. <laughs> like, he's, like, looking at the road, and she's like... <laughs> Edward pulled out through the traffic, apparently without a glance, flipping around to head towards the freeway. Now, he said significantly, it's your turn. That is the end of chapter 8.